we have to talk about the lockout. Let's get that out of the way. The updates we know are that the Players Association has dropped the age-based free agency proposal, which means that the free agency six-year service time, you know, um, standard is probably going to stay the same. Uh-huh. And yeah, they wanted it to anywhere. be like I think they wanted it to be six years or age twenty-eight, whichever comes first. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. So, which I thought, I thought the and... age thing made made sense. But I agree. You've also got to give a little to get a little. So hopefully that helps because the owners certainly didn't want that. Definitely didn't no. want that. Heck no. And I, you know, let's get into this right now. Mike Trout is on the record saying they're trying to make the game better. They're trying to make it more interesting for the fans. And this is further evidence of that being hullabaloo. We, the fans don't care about the age restriction thing. We don't care about arbitration dates. We don't, I mean, really, it doesn't affect the on the field I mean, product we, to tremendously. Be fair, to be, to fair, be fair, we do care about free agency to a degree because it, it, it decides. It's the deciding factor as to whether or not the star is going to stay in your hometown, right? Because there are some teams that just yes. flat out are not going to pay their stars. So you're like, okay, we got this guy for like two more years, right? So yeah. to some degree, yes, that does affect it. But ultimately, like fans just want their team to be on the field is what it right. really comes down to. And yeah, like they're like, we're, we're just trying to promote the game. It's like, well, you're not promoting it in a good way. Yeah, so no. for those of you who don't know, Mike Trout was on the Weather Channel this week because apparently he's a weather nerd, talking about how awesome that that nor'easter was this week, talking about how he loved that all the wet, all the roads were wrecked because of the snow and everything. <laughs> and then they asked him about the lockout, and he says there hasn't been a whole lot. But as Briggs said, he pointed out that they're trying to promote the game, and make it better. But if they really wanted to make it better for the fans, they get this thing done like tomorrow. Yeah, and that's and what it comes down to. Quit losing momentum and faith and all the other stuff that's going on. So negotiate more than two days a week, man. Right. As of last week, that's the information we still have. We do Um, also have this Jeff Passon tweeted out after the, after the negotiations were done on Tuesday, because they they met two days in a row. Uh, He said the MLB agreed to accept parameters of a pre-arbitration bonus pool for top 30 war, which is really cool. So what that means is it, I look at it as kind of like the Derek Rose rule in the NBA which means that if you're a rookie or if you're on your rookie contract and you win like the MVP or something like that, rookie of the year doesn't count because a rookie has to win that anyway. But like Derek Rose won the MVP in like his second year in the NBA, but he's still getting paid pennies compared to what he is worth. And then he went and tore his ACL was never the same player again. So he never got to cash in on money that he obviously had earned and deserved. So Mm -hmm. what this does is for guys who have not reached arbitration yet, like say like Fernando Tatis, he doesn't have to take, a potentially low ball deal from the team as an extension as a way to get paid to guarantee his money. Instead, he can take in part of that pre-arbitration bonus pool and get paid for that, get compensated that. Now, this is the issue. The Players Association wants that pool to be $105 million. Right. It's a lot of money. It's a Um, lot of money. The league wants it to be $10 million. That's not a lot of money, (laughs) relatively speaking. So they're they're gonna have to do some negotiating there. Honestly, if they met the middle at fifty, I think it'd be pretty good for everybody. Well, and I think it's a really good idea. If you got a guy that's an outstanding performer like that at such an early delivery, right? Mm -hmm. With such a young age, and he's he deserves to get paid. He deserves to get paid. And I, I I think I saw some of the statistics that said Vlad Guerrero Jr. uh, the a couple years ago would have. 200%. 200%. He would have 200x his income based on that proposal that went through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause from $600,000 in one year to like, you know, a couple of 1.8 million or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing they agree or they're working on is the MLB offered to raise the, the minimum salary to $650,000 right now. It's about 550. Yeah. 555, and, uh, something like that. The Players Association wants it to be 775. Right. They're, I feel like they're a little closer there. I mean, I know that's a bigger number, but that's going to be easier for them to to meet in the middle there. Yeah. Then uh, I, I think that they're going to find some common ground there. They might even find common ground today because they're meeting again today. They are meeting today, and we're hoping to hear good news. But mm-hmm. we still have core economic issues at play here. And I, I think I'm still hoping for information about um, revenue sharing and or salary cap. 
And right now there's no information about that. We have heard nothing to indicate right. whether or not it's going to go one way or the other, or if it's even on the table. So I'm personally worried about that because I think that's going to be one of the things that needs to happen. But one of the big things is I know that the, that the players first, or I think it was the owner's first proposition was uh, included a salary floor. Yeah. That was a big deal because I've heard, because a lot of people are saying you can't have a salary floor without a salary cap. Right. So because well, and it makes good sense but. because teams going over the cap or over over the I mean, right now they have the competitive competitive balance threshold is what they call it. And teams that go over that, like that would contribute to teams meeting the salary floor. So it all would kind of balance out in the end. I think that I do think there's going to end up being a salary floor, though, which I feel like is what really makes things competitive because you have teams that aren't used to spending money are forced to spend money to get yeah. uh, get a competitive team on the field. To me, it just feels like 60% of the solution. And I, I just feel like a 60% solution is still a little low. I'll take a yeah. 70% solution. <laughs> I'll every day take an 80% solution with opportunity to grow into something more. But but 50 to 60%, like, come yeah. on, man. And I think that's probably why the negotiations are still stalled, because everybody feels like they're only at 50 or 60% solutions. Could be. Yeah. Yeah, you're know. probably right. <laughs> 